There's a lot of team building decisions you can make in Genshin Impact and these are the 5 most popular teams right now that are all based on the latest 1.5 Chinese community data from the Spiral Abyss. If you were told that there's a character who not only takes damage periodically from his own burst, but also has problems with energy management, well, logically speaking, it would only make sense to avoid the trouble, but how could you say no to a sweetheart like Xiao? And it's easy to dismiss these problems once you see this Adepti in action and the amount of damage he's able to produce, but you still need to respect his own limits, which is why one of the most popular teams right now, currently running Xiao in the Spiral Abyss, also use Zhongli as his inseparable duo partner, while the rest of the composition depends on what you're trying to achieve but a lot of players prefer to use Jean and Albedo to complete this powerhouse of a team. And it's amazing to see that the two elements, which are kind of meant to support the main ones, like Electro, Pyro, Cryo and a Hydro, turns out to be perfect for each other, even if there's zero synergy when it comes to elemental reactions. That is, of course, if we're looking at this purely from your own team's perspective, when in reality, Animo can still reduce enemies' resistance if you're using the Viridescent set, while Crystallized Reactions will be a common sight against foes who are either shielded or have internal elemental status. But the beauty of this team is going back to Xiao's problematic nature of his burst, where you won't generate the elemental particles from his skill while using it, not to mention the cost of 70 energy points that makes this burst pretty expensive. And for this matter, Jean is the perfect partner in crime to help Xiao address these energy problems, but another popular alternative is Sucrose with sacrificial fragments that will create more energy than our emo boy can handle. In fact, there's a variation of triple animo that players like to use together with Jean and Sucrose. The final team members usually going to be Albedo to activate the Geo Resonance as well as provide the insane support damage from his Solar Isotoma Flower, not to mention the Geo Energy you'll get to enjoy with both him and Zhongli. As for his replacement, there's also Bennett who can give even more healing than it want to, but the powerful attack boost from his burst is what we're really after, even if Xiao likes to jump around like a maniac and might leave the circle as soon as you create it. And based on the data we've seen, the most popular weapon choice for Xiao remains to be his own signature weapon, the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, and for a good reason, since not only does it provide the critical rate everyone dreams of getting more of, but even the passive suits him well, since you will want to keep using him the entire burst duration. Now surprisingly, when it comes to the Geo Archon, Black Tassel seems to be a very common pick for him, but there's also variations of Deathmatch and even Vortex Vanquisher popping in from time to time. Still, it's good to see that a free-to-play weapon is a suitable option for the Geo Archon and you don't even need to have max refinements of it, unless of course you want to maximize your damage against slimes. And speaking of free-to-play weapons, Festering Desire is an extremely common sword you'll see Jean players using, so hopefully Mihoyo considers doing a rerun of this weapon for those who didn't obtain it during the limited 1.2 event. And to make things even better, our alchemical genius doesn't want to feel left out, so a lot of players prefer to use Harbinger of Dawn on him, which makes perfect sense because of his shy playstyle, where you'll quickly switch to him, do either a flower skill or burst, or both in this order, and then go back to the arms of the other teammates. But to be honest, there's a lot of irony to be found in this composition, from the fact that teammates are there to fix Xiao's problems and help him maximize his monstrous damage to the realization that while this is a team of 5 stars, majority of them are more than fine with a 3 star or free to play weapons. And Sky is the limit here, you could of course go for better ones just to squeeze out the damage, but from the data we've seen, it's clear that players put more emphasis on first obtaining 5 star characters and then use the budget weapons they have. And even then, you could easily replace Jean and Albedo with Sucrose and Bennett to have more flexibility when it comes to character Either way, this is just one of the 5 teams we've witnessed so far. Life of a Misfit is not an easy one, especially when you have 3 code names and a weapon that should use it as an afterthought, but even if our dear Ajax or Child or Tartalia, however you call him, is a misunderstood character at best, he more than makes up with his absolutely shredding power of Hydro Blades. And you would think that when the current final floor of the Abyss has a chamber full of Hydro Mimics, that it would make this Harbinger useless beyond his bow, but in reality, the first half of this floor is almost tailor-made for him, especially when we take a look at the team composition, a lot of players have been using to conquer it, and the friends that will be helping our sweet child of ours are going to be Shang Ling, Bennett and Venti, all of which are going to serve an important role in a meta that's mostly dominated by shields. And the basic idea behind this team is pretty simple, you scoop everyone up with Venti's burst, punch the ground with Bennett and activate Pyronado with Shang Ling, and then go ham on everyone clumped together that will result in a massacre like no other. Now when it comes to weapons, sadly there's not much data behind it, and that's because this team from previous versions wasn't getting the traction, and the sudden appearance of it in one 
1.5 makes things a bit more difficult at decoding it, but we can at least try to cross-reference it with other teams we've seen, and Verdescent Hunt or Skyward Harp, as well as Rust, is definitely one of the weapons Child could be using, while for Shangling would be either Deathmatch or Dragon's Bane, but any of the energy recharge weapons like Prototype Star Glitter, Favonius Lance or Skyward Spine could do the job, and for our Benny Boy, if no one else is using it, then Festering Desire is the go-to weapon for him, while for Venti, nearly everyone is using the Stringless, and for a good reason, since the passive it provides is beyond amazing for him. But going back to action, it's hard not to admire the amount of damage you can produce on a group of enemies, although it will be less effective when you're fighting against single targets, but even then, for the current Spiral Abyss Final Floor, this is an especially popular team to go for if you dream about giving payback to those lectors. Just when you thought this list is going to be dominated by pay-to-win teams, or at least for this matter, teams that mostly rely on 5-star characters, here comes a composition that's dubbed as the national team by the Chinese community, and it's more or less the idea that everyone who's playing the game has a very high likelihood of having these characters obtained. But this is a pretty much specifically designed team that relies on you having Shangling, Xing Chou, as well as Cheng Yun and Bennett, and once you're done assembling them, the payoff is amazing to say the least, especially when it comes to how much synergy you can have. Obviously, the first thing that we see here is that there's freeze as well as melt and vaporize reactions this team can do, which is not the most conventional thing out there, since we're used to designing compositions around one or two reactions at most, but in here, the double pyro resonance, as well as various tricky internal cooldowns you will find between the skills and bursts, will end up as a nice mixture of deadly damage. Now, even if the characters are all 4 stars, the most common weapons from the crowdfunded data shows that Shangling's go-to weapon is Skyward Spine, but for those looking at an alternative solution, Favonius Lance or Prototype Star Glitter can at least supplement the Energy Recharge substat, even if their passives aren't as amazing as the 5-star weapon. But ideally, you want this substat more than anything, since our chef is cooking her burst with an expensive 80 energy cost. And the problematic nature of high energy cost doesn't end here, because Xingqiu also heavily depends on Sacrificial Sword passive, and while other Energy Recharge weapons are going to be inferior choices for him, you still definitely want to get Energy Recharge as a substat. Finally, for a popsicle boy, Serpent Spine is a claymore that a lot of players have reported to be using it on him, while Bennett, just like before, loves to have Festering Desire equipped. So while this so-called free-to-play team has a bit of a controversial weapon selection to say the least, you can still find replacements or alternatives, but even then, the amount of damage and synergy you will have will still heavily depend on not just your own gameplay skills, but also the artifacts you'll be using, and most importantly, the reason this team is so good is the overall performance, and the fact that capitalizes on basically all the strongest reactions that are currently available in the game. You could say that this next team is really just a trio of characters that invites Aura the last member to observe their insane power, but it doesn't hurt to have extra firepower when you're obliterating everyone in sight. This of course refers to Hu Tao, Xing Chou, and Zhang Li that capitalize on vaporized damage paired together with a shield from the gods, and while the last teammate can be a very flexible choice, the most popular pick is usually Albedo, followed by Ningguang, and then either Cheng Yun, Sucrose, or even Bennett. And what's funny about it is that even if the second half of the final floor contains Hydro Mimics, which are going to be immune to Xing Chou's Water Swords. This is not going to be a problem because Zhang Li's shield, the remaining teammate, and our dear Hu Tao's damage output is more than enough to dispatch everyone swiftly for a 3 star rating. Not to mention, the final enemy is actually a Pyro Abyss Mage, so breaking that little scoundrel's shield is going to be an easy job for our Brook Nerd. Now, back when Hu Tao got first announced, if you've been following the community closely, you notice that one weapon became of high interest, and it seems to be that the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the day because Staff of Homa is one of the most common equips you'll find on Hu Tao, and you've pretty much seen all the other popular weapon choices shown previously. But what's interesting is the variable, which is the last teammate, and seeing how Albedo makes the list is not that surprising, but Ningguang and Chong Yun, as well as Bennett, will certainly raise an eyebrow or two, but if we take a closer look, it's clear that Ningguang acts as a damage support and extra firepower, as long as Hu Tao's skill is on cooldown, while Chong Yun is more or less doing the same job as you would expect from a national team shown previously, but the most fascinating biggest Bennett, who directly counters Hu Tao's damage capabilities, since she needs to be on low health to do most damage. Hence, why Zhang Li's shield is there for her, but apparently, pyro damage and increased attack power from the burst is a hard thing to resist, even if it means sacrificing some of that walnut synergy. However, you might have been looking at this suspiciously this whole time, because while the focus is on our funeral director, this team actually used to be run by none other than Diluc himself, but it seems to be he has been put out of commission by the new kid on the block, but then how should Razor or any 
any physical damage dealers should feel when this team actually suits them as well. Either way, just because the Chinese community data shows Hu Tao as the most popular choice for this team, it doesn't mean you shouldn't put someone else in her place, it's just merely a decision a lot of people made. In fact, you will find that Deluxe is in a lot of these team variations as well, but because he never had his own featured banner, it's easy to see why Hu Tao became more dominant when everyone had a chance to obtain her. But when it comes to real dominance, this final team is the literal embodiment of it. What do you get when an astrologist, a bard, and a workaholic walks into a bar owned by a cat? Apparently, the most powerful and popular team in the game right now, or at least when it comes to evaluating its performance in the Spiral Abyss. And this team is basically the culmination of the most broken things you could think of, from having a nearly permanent freeze uptime on your enemies, to insane damage output from Ganyu, followed by crowd control from Venti, damage boost from Mona, and healing paired together with shielding from Diona. But if we would dive into more nitty gritty details, the visual duration of Mona Mona's damage boost from her omen mark can actually be extended if the enemies afflicted by it are frozen, so you get an extra 2 or more seconds just from having this constant reaction, and even the small things, like Sacrificial Bow and Diona, which is the go-to weapon for her, acts as a cryo particle generator, not just for her cat lady, but also Ganyu as well, who can rely on her burst when the cooldown is up. Speaking of weapons, besides the stringless bow and venti, the often ridiculed Amos bow is the most common weapon you'll find on Ganyu when looking at the data, while with Sith is the popular choice a lot of people seem to go for when looking at Mona. Now what's also interesting is that even this team has variations, and one of them includes using Jean instead of Diona, which has been a very common duo of Venti and her back when the game first launched, while on an overall analysis, she basically provides similar things you would expect from Diona, except no shielding or cryo particles for Coco Goat. But surely, for such an amazing team, only a name of Epic Legends will fit it, and that's why the Chinese players chose the name of Morgana, that you would think is meant to strike fear into enemies from the popular League of Legends character, but it's really just a nice little combination of the trio of Mona, Ganyu, and Diona Chinese names. It's important to remember that teams you just saw have a lot of different variations to them, not to mention it's just the top 5 that surface from the gathered data of the Chinese community players, and there's a ton of proof out there where people can clear the abyss with just 2 characters or free to play picks, and at the end of the day, it's simply a showcase of what's popular right now, while the most crucial thing is to first enjoy your own characters before trying to chase the so-called meta. And while the non-existent presence of Electro is disheartening to say the least, there are in fact quite a number of teams using fish as well as Razor, it's just that their appearance is less common, and you can check out this data for yourself from the links in the description. But if you want to see future videos that discuss these teams individually with more details, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel by hitting the bell notification on. As always, thanks for watching till the end, and see you next time.